is the story of a famous pioneer, son of Doc Cavalier, the man who brought dental health to the Old West. Here comes. We'll travel. Yeah, howdy, Wranglers. Yeah, this is your old yarn spinner, Dr. Phil Cavity. Time to sashay down memory trail again as we pick up the Shoe Hill story where we left off. Today's episode, Incident at the OK Corral. It was a hot midsummer day in the year 1853. Our new marshal, Bushmelon, had a date with destiny and a wild fire-breathing stallion named the Black Killer. Me and the mayor, Lank Tweedy, and Miss Kitten, sole owner and proprietress of the Gold Nugget Saloon, was accompanying the marshal through our town's hot, dusty main drag. Now, you see, in Dodge City, I rode a Shetland pony, sort of a compact model. Got better oats mileage, much more maneuverability. What? A Shetland pony? Yeah, it had its disadvantages, too, mind you. I mean, my feet was always dragging. But I'd be quite willing to use uh, one here in Shoe Hill, or, or a bicycle. Uh, they're kind of handy. Well, well, that's nonsense, Marshal. You'll ride a horse like every other law enforcement officer in the Golden West, a bicycle indeed. You could get uh, one built for two. Uh, for me and my deputy, Daisy. Daisy? Yeah, it's just a nickname. Some Daisy remembers his name, some Daisy forgets. <laughs> hey, where are you going? Yeah, the corral, Marshal. Come on. There's plenty of excitement. Yeah, come on. Must be the black killer that's snorting and screaming. Come on, let's snap it up. There he is. Oong Mung Latak Moon Way, as the Apaches call him. Huh? What does that mean in English? A rough translation would be man killer with the flashing hooves of steel. You know, I don't really need a horse in my job. Uh, walking is a uh, very good exercise. You, you know, ain't yellow, are you, Marshal? Oh, boy, it's a good thing you're a woman, Miss Kitten. Why is that, big boy? Well, if you weren't, you look awfully silly in that calico dress and lace bonnet. Now, <laughs> <coughs> cut out the stolen, Marshal Mellon. Let's see you hop that fence and lasso that stallion. Or saddle on him and bust him. Prove to him who's boss. Will you stop shoving? You just can't rush into this sort of thing. Wait a minute, Marshal. Give me a boost over the corral fence. Well, no, 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 no. Hold on, Miss Kit. Oh, it's all right, Melon. She knows what she's doing. Just watch. Best horsewoman this side of the Pecos River. <laughs> Wild horse by the mean. Well, how about that? She's slapping with the whip. Good heavens. I ain't never seen nothing like this. Yeah, she's giving it to him and he's taking it too. All right, you low down, ornery black heart of Caius. I'll show you who's boss. Take that. And that. Well, there you are, Marshal. What do you think of that? It's fantastic. That wild beast is behaving like a tame little pony. Yeah. See the way he's nuzzling up to Miss Kitten there and licking her cheeks and rubbing up against her? Think you could do that, Marsh? You're darn right I can. You just get that crazy horse out of there and I'll show you. Next time, the new marshal meets Big Mama Cartwheel with the Gypsy Rosa in the Gold Nugget Saloon, and Mellon soon discovers the reason why Big Mama makes Calamity Jane look like one of the campfire girls. Till then, Doc Cavity reminding you, if you can't eat before each brush and forget it. The 
This script is written for radio by Les Lai. Research, Merman Fox. Additional dialogue, Paul Vangelstein. Original music composed and played by J. Renfrew Gart. My name is Sherman Furlong. <laughs> is the story of a famous pioneer, son of Doc Cavalry, the man who brought dental health to the Old West. Have gums, we'll travel. Howdy, straight shooters and wranglers. Howdy. It was mid-afternoon, the quiet time in the Gold Nugget Saloon. Yeah, I was just ambling downstairs from my office. After a difficult extraction, 50 cents from Mayor Lank Tweedy for four fillings and a minor repair job on his parcel plate. Yeah, the bar was deserted except for Miss Kitten, who was busy resetting the mouse traps. She got them hidden in the cash register. Howdy, Miss Kitten. Pour me a double, will you? It's coffee break time. Coffee break? Yeah, it's just an expression. Yeah. How about joining me in a glass of old Dr. Lansdowne's Indian elixir and cure-all? I think there'd be room for the both of us, Phil. Yeah, room for... Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. I said, will you join me in a glass of Forget Dr. Forget it. Yeah. I never chew my cabbage twice. Yeah, come on, come on. Huh. Come on, come on. Sounds like customers are heading for my swinging doors. Uh, uh, where is he, uh, Miss Kitten? Horace Cartwheel, Adam, and Big Mama. Where is that new monster, that lily livered, yellow streaked, sniveling vomit? Yeah, he's standing right behind you, Adam. Oh. <sighs> Look what you done, Doc, you big fink. My son had them fainted dead away. Pick him up, horse. Ah, uh, yes, Mummy. I'm sorry, Big Mama. Yeah, I was just joshing him. No hard feelings, Philip. Let's get in the glass of my favorite. Mm -hmm. Best cooking cherry you got. Coming right up, ma'am. Now, just to show you, I don't hold no grudges. You like a shot, Doc? Yeah, I don't mind if I do. Yeah, all righty. Shoe Hill is now without the services of a qualified dentist. Oh, my land, sakes and glory, Oski, child. I just grazed him, just a flesh wound. <laughs> He's coming around already, ain't you, honey? Yeah, yeah. You ought to be more careful with that six-shooter, Miss Cartwheel. If I weren't careful, you'd have filled your last cavity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, filled your last uh, <laughs> cavity. <laughs> Try and get over that, Horace. <laughs> Tell me, big mama, what brings you into town on a Wednesday? I hear tell there's a new marshal in town. Mm. Just thought me and my three sons would sashay on in and pay our respects. Adam, Adam, where's that child? I'm here, Mummy. I don't feel well. What you need is a little pick-me-up, Eve. That's Adam, and cut that out. Here. Try this. I hope this isn't instant coffee. I can't stand that. Just try it, Whitey. Oh, they only get percolated coffee out to the ranch, Miss Kitty. None of that new fandangle stuff, you know. 
Go ahead and live, honey. Come on, try it. I will, but uh, I won't like it. Hmm, that's not instant coffee. Hmm. Boy, what is it? Hot scotch. Next time, the confrontation. Big Mama Cartwheel of the Gypsy Rosa meets the new Marshal, Marshmallow. The old story, an immovable object running headlong into an irresistible force. Don't miss the next episode. This program is written by Les Lye. A part of Miss Kitten is played by Jacqueline Marshall. Research assistant, Merman Fox. Original music and composed a musical. The playing of the music. Good heavens. Jay run through Garp. Uh, my name is Sherman Furlock. is the story of a famous pioneer, son of Doc Cavanaugh, the man who brought dental health to the Old West. Here comes, we'll travel. Howdy, you straight shooters and any foreign additionists. This is your old yarn spinner, Doc Cavity, with another tale from the Golden West. It was mid-afternoon in Shoe Hill, summer 18053. I was in the midst of filling one of Sheriff Mush Mellon's molars. I later wrote a folk song about this. That's what I called it, the Ballad of Mush Mellon's Molar. Yeah, this kitten was helping me out. I didn't have no regular nurse. Besides, it was a quiet time of the day in the saloon downstairs. Oh, she often sat in while I was drilling, filling, and yanking teeth. She laughed a lot. Yeah, I sometimes wondered about her. You got a live one this time, Doc Cavity. Look at them squirming around like a tromped on snake. Uh, come on now, Marshal. It's all in your mind. Couldn't hurt you that much. When you... Uh, now turn it off. Oh, oh, that's smart. You want the anesthetic now, Marshal? You're darn right I do. That drilling hurts something fierce. What's it, uh, what's it gonna be, a local? I don't know. Doc, you gonna give him a local? No, sir. No, sir, this is imported. I'm talking about the anesthetic. What are you gonna do... What are you going to do with that melon? Now, this is the anesthetic, Marshal. It's genuine teak wood with a solid oak handle. Now, hold still. Yeah, very neat, Miss Kitten. Right, right between the eyes. And with him, there ain't that much room there. Okay, now we get on with it. Yeah, indeed, really tear you through. Yeah, okay, there we are, five fillings, and you never fell a thing. Now that's what I call painless dentistry. Yeah, except for that lump on his head where I slugged him with that mallet. Oh, oh looks oh. like he's coming too. Oh. Oh. Yeah, come in. Why, it's Big Mama. Howdy, ma'am. You want an appointment for one of your boys? No, son. Oh, oh, howdy, Miss Kitten. Hello, Big Mama. How's the queen of the gypsy, Rosa? I'm looking for the new marshal. That him? Yeah, that's him. Oh. He's just coming out of shock. Oh, oh, oh. Where am I? 
Oh, Ed, how'd you fill those teeth, Doc? Through my left ear? Oh. Uh, Marshall Mellon, yeah. this is Big Mama Cartwheel, owner of the biggest spread this side of the Pecos River. I can see that. I hear she's got a big ranch, too. Now that ain't nice, Sammy. Miss Kitten? <laughs> oh, yes. Here we are. Oh, no. <laughs> Why'd you hit him with that mallet, Big Mama? Ain't that what it's for? Excuse me. No sense in wasting a good anesthetic. Next time, who knows? Who cares? The music is composed for this series. I'll perform by J. Renfrew Garth. Research assistant, Merman Fopp. The part of Miss Kitten is played by Jacqueline Marshall. My name is Sherman Furlong. is the story of a famous pioneer, son of Doc Cavalry, the man who brought dental health to the Old West. Here it comes. We'll travel. All was calm in Shoe Hill, Nevada that afternoon. It was too quiet. I had a feeling that trouble was afoot. Yeah, there was a rumor that a mysterious stranger had been seen hanging around the general store. It was a hot, dry, midsummer day, the year 1853. Yeah, I was uh, leaning on the bar in the gold nugget saloon, uh, toying with my afternoon pick me up. Did anybody ever tell you you're beautiful? Yeah, 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 Flory. You're a gal after my own heart. Yeah, but there ain't no sense in trying to josh me. I got a face even a mother'd have trouble with. Yeah. In fact, when I was born, my old mammy thought they'd left the stork and let the baby get away. <laughs> Why, howdy, Doc. Oh, howdy. Oh, Flory, a bottle of red eye for the boys at the poker table. And keep moving. Even when you're standing still. Yeah, bye bye, Miss Flory. Yeah, we'll see you later. Yeah, you got some uh, genuine red eye, Miss Kitten? I brewed it myself, Doc. 100 proof. Mm, homemade red eye. Yeah, what's in it? There's equal parts of wood alcohol, urine, and fermented tomato juice. Yeah. It's the only drink we serve. That gives you a hangover while you're drinking it. Well, sure. No, I just might be. Uh, uh, what's that? It's a mysterious stranger. What? Wait, out of my way. First one that crosses me gets a skin full of lead. <laughs> now, one side, sister. There's the bartender. Well, now, I'm afraid that he's busy right no, big boy. But, uh, hi, kitten. <coughs> I own this saloon. What can I do for you, Captain? Uh, nothing right now. I'm thirsty. <coughs> Liquor's my weakness. <coughs> Try to get over that stranger. Now, this here's our town dent. Doc Cavity. Howdy, partner. I didn't catch your name. Yeah, that's on account of I didn't throw it. Folks call me <coughs> Bronchio Bill. Bronchio Bill. Bronchio Bill. Yes, Bronchio Bill. We've heard tell of you here in Shoe Hill. Some folks say there's a price on your head. Yeah, I reckon they're right, yes, ma'am. There's a price on my head, all right. 
Right over here, see? <coughs> Near my left ear. Right there. <coughs> well, I'll be hot swine. There is a price on your head. Four ninety-five. It happened when I was a little Jasper in Fork Tongue, Texas. Yeah? My daddy was a butcher. Used to use a branding iron for stamping prices on his roast. You know, it's <coughs> you mean to tell me that your father well, <coughs> to ant intentional. Uh, got his bifocals on upside down one day. I'd fallen asleep with my head on the chopping block and whoomp, oh, oh. <coughs> Boy, that's smart enough. I'll tell you I that. I'm <coughs> hurt to the great part, but you're a gunner for the cartwheel. Big Mama Cartwheel and her vicious cutthroat sons swindled me out of my life savings, my homestead, and I swore vengeance upon them. Revenge will be mine. <coughs> I'll never rest till all the cartwheels have been wiped off in the face of the earth. <coughs> Take it easy, Bill. Here's the bartender. Sam, get something for my friend. When a cough from a cold just seems to stick. Mother, 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 get the pie next quick. Next time, 10 seconds will have elapsed, and we'll hear Bronchian, Bronchial Bill play. <laughs> the dialogue for this show by Paul Bangelstein, narrative and the storyline, less lie, Jacqueline Marshall appears as Miss Kitten. One who piped out this script remains anonymous. Only. My name is Sherman Furlong. <laughs> yeah, last time, we left Bronchial Bill, scourge of the Wyoming Badlands, holding forth in the Gold Nugget Saloon, shooting off his mouth about how he was going to fix Big Mama Cartwheel and her sons for ruining them. Financially and physically. Now he's still haranguing the clientele as we sneak through those swinging doors today. Yeah. But he's unaware that Adam Cartwheel has just entered the saloon. Yeah, he's listening to every word with just a faint trace of a smile, creasing his bronze, weather beaten countenance. <laughs> I'm gonna squash every one of them cartwheels like you would a scorpion. That's all they is. <coughs> Old Dan Fangle, bunch of them. <coughs> a law unto themselves. Riding roughshod over ordinary folks. Just let me get my hands on any one of them ordinary varmints, and I'll break Bill, every bone. Bill, I'll, 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 i you better stand up when you're talking to Bronchial Bill. I am standing up. Now cut that out. I'm Adam Cartwheel. And I don't like what I just heard. Now, you take back those nasty things you said about my mummy. Yeah, give him both barrels, Adam. He's all bluff. Why, you little pipsqueak, get off in my back before I get mad and tear all the lace off in your cowboy shirt. <coughs> oh, boy. Bartender. Give me another Pimex on the rocks. <coughs> now, Adam, control yourself. Oh. First thing you know, you'll be crying. And you know how your mascara runs off. That's not funny, Miss Kitten. This meanie has blackened the cartwheel name. He has insulted my family, made insidious, heinous accusations against my mummy. I won't stand for it. You hear me? I won't stand for it. Okay, Sonny. Try lying down for it. Uh, take that, you... Yeah. Oh, oh, Try stop it. that. Okay. Now you pick yourself up and haul your carcass out to the Gypsy Rosa and tell your ma and your brothers that Bronchial Bill's in town and their dooms are sealed. Gee whiz, you big bully. Just wait until I tell my mother. And my brother Horace, too. Gee whiz, he's all right, boys. 
break it up. Here, Adam, you dropped your compact. Thank you. That's my cigarette lighter. Huh, you Adam. better do as he says, Adam. I think he means business. Uh, sir, you know that. And remember, punk, <coughs> Bronk Hill Bill's in town, and their dooms are sealed. Well, if you think for one minute, that I'm going back to the Gypsy Rosa and tell my mother that some cat named Barney Fodell is in town and her seal is being... Well, no, I'll... no, no, Adam. You got it all uh, wrong. Uh, that ain't right at all. My name is Bronchio Bill. And, the and... expression is their deals are assumed. No, no, it isn't, Miss Kitten. I believe what he meant was uh, their duels are assumed. What in tarnation is a duel? Oh. And how do you see one? No, oh, wait a minute. No, no, I didn't I say that. I think you have oh. one pinex oh. too many, I, I told him... Uh, and that's the wild cherry uh, brand you're drinking, you know. Tell his ma that I's in town. Now, yes, Adam, yes, Adam you'd you just better... Uh, uh, hold on, hold on. Hold it. Jacqueline Marshall appears as Miss Kitten. The part of Bronchial Bill is not played by Parker Fennelly. Original music composed and performed by J. Renfrew Garp. Script by Les Lyons, Paul Bangelstein. Next time, showdown on the main drag. Big Mama meets Bronchial Bill. This program is produced and directed. My name is Sherman Furlong.